The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Joining us now on the on the line is uh, Senator Bob Headland from uh, from Weymouth, and uh, he is the he's the proprietor of a bar that has never been accused hey, of having. Howie, how are you? You you've never your bar has never been accused of having data decor, has it? Uh, since we only opened it up in um, April, I would say no. <laughs> we did strive for a 1930s look, though, um, you know, to recreate the original decor of the place. But uh, hey, Howie, this stuff boggles the mind. Maybe. Maybe Uncle Obama got a uh, Social Security number if he goes back 20-plus years from the uh, Dukakis era when so, they were handing them out. Somebody mentioned that, but, I mean, if you if you if came if he came up, if he popped up on this list with these uh, state police looking, I mean, those numbers, as I recall them, were, were, were patently fake. I mean, they had like 000 as the first right. three numbers. So, so you would know they were fake, right? Right. Now, did you uh, determine whether or not Uncle Obama had an X registration on his vehicle, or was he driving a borrowed vehicle? No, we have not determined that yet. We're waiting to get the uh, police report. That's why I wanted to have you on, uh, Bob Headland, because uh, you know we've talked to, we talked with a lot of cops about this and this uh, this this pro- this incredible process where uh, if you're an illegal alien, you basically get a pass on uh, the same kind of registration laws that apply to the rest of us, right? Well, no, anyone can go in and register a car in in Massachusetts. Without a license, uh, you know, it's in the Massachusetts, and obviously, it's used more prevalently for folks who might not have valid driver's licenses. Yeah. So, 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 could a could someone who uh, who who's lost his license for drunk driving could also register register and get an X registration for his car? Anyone can. You, you need you need a valid insurance certificate. Go in. Say like register. a for, like in a, like a former state senator or something could go in and get an X registration. Yeah, and then you know theoretically, how then you could walk out and then cancel your insurance if you wanted to, because we are finding that a lot of the folks who have um, X registrations are also uh, uninsured. Uh, you know, there's a pretty actually um, your friends over at Fox 25, uh, Mike Bodette has done some great work on this, as have others. Um, and we've got some police departments and individual officers that have done some good work on this. Just over in um, uh, Saugus, yeah, there was an informal uh, kind of survey done during uh, an eight eight month period, and uh, Officer Jim Scott over there during that time frame recorded about thirteen stops with X registrations, and of the thirteen. Uh, uh, five of those incidents, the person had a fake driver's license from Guatemala, just from just from that one country. Five, uh, so five of the thirteen had a had a fake had fake Guatemalan driver's licenses. Correct. Yeah. So we, we do find that it is being used more prevalently for uh, undocumented or illegal folks who who just don't have uh, who don't have uh, legitimate licenses. Forget forget having a legit you know. The other issues. Uh, so we find that it's you know folks who are in the country illegally. So tell tell us again. Tell me again. I don't because I don't quite understand it. I've seen some of those those things Mike Bodette's done. How does an X registration? How do you get an X registration? Walk into the registry. Okay, I walk into the registry. What do I? I say I want an X registration. What do they I, say? I want, I want to register a car. I want to register a car. I don't have a license. Correct. So you get an X registration. Now theoretically. This started back in the day when, for instance, uh, a, a grandparent maybe wanted to register a car for a kid turning 16, and they owned the vehicle or what have you, or, uh, you know, a, choose by companies. And in the legislation I have, we obviously make a, uh, an exception for uh, companies to go through the process of registering their fleets yeah. uh, who might have X registrations. But for an individual driver to not have a license and walk into the registry in this state it's crazy, and we hear from police officers regularly. I, I got a call today, and this is no exaggeration, and not, it's not, I'm sure it's coincidence, but, you know, police officer uh, in central Massachusetts who knew I was working on this issue and asking how it's going. And I've asked, I've asked, by the way, the police officers that contact us for assistance in getting some formal endorsements from police organizations to support this bill because we do get it passed in the, in the Senate every year now for the last few years. And it gets killed in conference. Uh, we can't get the House to accept the Senate language on this issue. 
Well, so so they go they go and I say I don't have a license. Do I have to produce any identification or anything, or do I just produce uh, you know my uh, my my official uh, my uh, member in good standing of uh, of uh, Chicken Bone in Framingham? By the way, I did see that show last night. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Talk about coincidence. No, you need, you basically, from my, my understanding, how is you need an insurance certificate to show that the vehicle you're registering is insured. Yeah. And you'll get, you'll get your tags. And bye-bye. That's it? Yeah. That's it? And like you That's, said, as soon as you, uh, you could fraudulently, you could, uh, you could, uh, I, I assume, uh, forge uh, insurance certificates and not even put down a down payment. But as soon as you walk out the door, you could, you could uh, cancel your insurance and you've got your, correct. and you got your plates. Correct. And by the way, part of the legislation um, also allows for increased penalties for driving without a license. What bothers me, what drives me crazy is if you're an American citizen, a Massachusetts native, you get pulled over without a license. Guess what? You're going to get written up. Right. Uh, the, 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 this is so prevalent now with traffic stops of people with fraudulent or no licenses who are in the country illegally. Uh, for instance, I've been told by one police department not far from, from uh, where I reside uh, that they average a minimum of one stop per day throughout the course of the week of undocumented aliens driving vehicles who are stopped for traffic stops. I've also been told by two uh, police department prosecutors in my district that a presiding judge at a particular uh, court told my police departments not to bring in any more uh, undocumented alien illegal drivers. Uh, Why? In fact, because they're just plugging up the courts. And and in, in the case, yeah, they're of also the, killing people too. Well, we had a you know you 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 highlighted a few of those cases. We had a vehicular manslaughter case uh, in Hingham not too long ago where we, we had a victim who was killed, and the driver, we found out, had multiple identities from Brazil and was driving with, with and had three fake IDs. They fled before the police discovered that there were multiple identities right. and probably left the country. Right. Remember the uh, remember the the newspaper delivery guy a few years ago. He hit a he hit a uh, jogger at uh, at dawn, and right. uh, he just uh, they uh, they foolishly let him go on personal recognizance, and that's the last anybody's ever seen of him, at least now, under the current let, name. Let me let me paint a picture for you. Let's say you're you're a police officer, a police chief, in an area with a large you know immigrant population, and many of those immigrants might be in the country illegally. Your police department makes a makes a stop. You'll you'll spend you'll have an officer spend three hours to process that person if you decide to take them in. Then they then you've transported them to the courts later, uh, or you know your, your your prosecutor has to show up for the court date if that person shows up in court. And uh, the court walked up with these times people are just uh, excuse me the judges are just uh, waving waving the case, dismissing the case, and and hitting the person up for court costs. Right, I've seen a lot. Yeah, yeah, I see a lot. I see a lot of that in the uh, in the police logs. But my guess is, if it's if it's you or me, uh, you're probably not going to get that. No, uh, well, uh, the guy who killed uh, the the guy uh, in Milford, who's charged uh, the uh, the Ecuadorian, who's charged with killing the uh, the American, he uh, he had one of the one of his driving without a licenses was. Uh, uh, was dismissed. Now I assume now that didn't mean that he. I'm sure he had. He he didn't have a license. The the judge just threw it out. I I had a liberal friend today beat me up a little bit, saying, you know, this is just anecdotal. Uh, you're singling these cases out, creating fear. But the fact is, and the statistics are that more people are killed in the country on a yearly basis by illegal aliens in some fashion, whether it's whether it's through gang gang activity or whether it's through reckless driving, uh, then we've lost uh, in, in Afghanistan in the, in the war, in the 10-year war. Yeah. So, you know, it's a problem. It's a public safety problem. But not only that, it's a homeland security problem. You know, like the police officer told me today, what would prevent someone from just going and registering a car, loading that thing up with explosives, and driving it into a building? I mean, it's just crazy in this day and age that we still allow this loophole to exist. I don't understand my colleagues in the legislature that won't sign off on this. And by the way, I don't want to beat up on the registry here. They've been, they've been cooperative with us in providing us data on this, but they've pushed back on this issue for some reason. They've pushed back on the X-plates? 
on yes. the ex-registrations? They have not uh, come out in support of this legislation. Why Why would they? I mean, you're, you're right, Bob. I mean, they, they've gone out of their way to make it uh, possible to, uh, to deny you the renewal of your uh, registration or your driver's license if you, if you have an unpaid parking ticket for 10 bucks. But they want, but they want to allow illegal aliens to register cars. Howie, when I did when we did the safe driving bill in in 2010, I've, I got this provision included in the Senate version. In two successive budget debates, I've got this provision included in the state budget. It's been knocked out in conference. Now I know there's probably some of my Democrat colleagues in the Senate that said they supported this and probably didn't advocate for it in conference. Yeah. The fact is, we we can't get it. Can't, can't you? Can't uh, there? I mean, there are Republicans in the conference committee. Can't you find out who the people that are uh, who are pushing for killing this? Well, I mean, uh, you know. Oh, with, don't tell oh, me about this uh, collegial uh, no, courtesy. No, no, no. With, well, well, we've had we've had conference committees where Republicans aren't even included. Give me a break. I mean, you know, you know how that works. Ugh. So you know, this is this has been pushing a stone up the hill, but you know, we had. What I don't understand, too, Howie, is we, we passed, uh, and the Republicans in the Senate put forward, in the last couple of budget debates, we had, you know, about probably a dozen uh, immigration reform measures, things that we could do at the state level. And of the dozen, I mean, to me, this seems the most basic and most common sense out of the 12. I know right. you get into em- employment law issues, you get into, you know, other things that some say are controversial, you know, in-state tuition. But to me, this is just a public safety no-brainer uh, that, that for whatever reason, um, you know, we can't get this administration to support. Uh, haven't there been cases? I think there have been cases where you know, maybe like there's this, uh, you know, consortium of New England states and that somebody uh, had like an overdue library book in Vermont and wasn't allowed to to uh, renew his driver's license. I mean, if you're if you're going to go after Americans for for that level of non crime, why can't you go after illegal aliens who are who are costing the taxpayers and and the state hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars in, in every one of these fake uh, registrations they pull off? By the way, the registry started this program in 1970, and there's been 170,000 X registrations issued since 1970. Now, the registry tells me that there's only uh, a little under 3,000 of them still active. Do you believe that? Uh, well, uh, to be honest with you, we had some trouble uh, discerning actually how many are out there from the registry database uh, because, again, they were not computerized. And it was actually, I was told, and this may be anecdotal, but I was told that basically it was a card index file at one point. Oh, great. And, so, uh, so, so, uh, so this guy in Saugus, uh, he there's only three thousand of them in the entire state of millions of registered vehicles, and he goes out and stops thirteen, and five of them have X X uh, registration. Uh, in the in the during yeah during the eight month period, he had what he did was during his all traffic stops, he kept a log of how many X registrations were involved in all of his traffic stops in the eight month period. He had thirteen stops that involved X registrations. Yeah. Uh, that were off, there were more actually than thirteen, but thirteen of the stops that he had involved X registrations by unlicensed drivers. Wow. And of of those five, uh, there were five fake uh, drivers licensed from Guatemala. Now, now he may have had more stops where, you know, the person just had also a fake license for all we know. Right. You know, I mean, uh, one of my local police departments has got a box of confiscated bogus IDs, and, and these days, um, you know, one of the one of the documents of choice is, believe it or not, a photocopied uh, or a printed out of a computer fake passport. It's it's not even it's not even attempt at a good forgery, but pretty much the word is out in the in the immigrant community that you can drive around that the, the cops have the given only, up. The cops, I'll tell you what, they have given up, and basically, in one of my communities, what they'll do is they will they will tow the person's vehicle. Yeah, the toll lot inconvenience them that way, and then they've got to go retrieve it from the toll lot. But they'll only uh, confiscate the fake uh, document, the fake license. Oh, geez, they point. have to go back to the public library to make another Xerox copy. That's tough. Well, I mean, but, but you know, why would you continue to bring them to the courts if the if the if the local court and the and the justices are going to just simply uh, dismiss the case? Yeah. So 
you know, the cops are in a, a tough no, spot. No, I understand. I'm not I'm not putting down the cops. I I understand they're in a tough spot. What do you think of this uh what do you think of Uncle Omar? Uh, Have uh, Uncle Omar and his uh his valid social security number. You think it's really <laughs> I mean, I hope I hope the uh, Framingham cops have uh, have confiscated his license. Well, some police departments, Howie, have actually gone a little further out of frustration because of the prevalency of these fake documents and are keeping their own databases and actually in some different departments are photographing these folks that they might detain uh-huh. and, and keeping their own photographic database because they find that they're arresting the same person but with multiple identities. Uh, and, and there actually, I think there's some activity at the um, training councils where they're sharing data and information on how they do that. So some of the police departments are being a little proactive because they find themselves in these frustrating positions where they keep arresting the same people and the person's got a different identity. They don't know who the person is anymore. Right. Yeah, I know. I'm sure the ACLU would like to file a nice uh, class action lawsuit on behalf of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Guayman and uh, Obama and the rest of them, you know, saying, yeah. oh, you're taking, well, you're violating right. our rights as illegal aliens. Well, you know, the other thing we, we tried to do, and it's funny how, you know, Obama's relatives are highlighting these efforts, but, you know, in Massachusetts, we don't uh, screen the way for state subsidized housing units the way we do for federally subsidized housing units. I've tried to change that. And um, as you know, the same ha- thing has happened. We're passed in the Senate. The House defeats it. And, of course, you know, the Auntie Zaituni thing brought the situation to light. She's in, in public housing, state subsidized public housing. We know it's happening. I'm told by housing authority directors in a couple of different communities around the state that it happens. And uh, we can't get that simple change. So theoretically, we've got, you know, a lifelong American citizen who might be in legitimate need of housing getting displaced by someone who broke the laws of this country and came into the country illegally. Right. Well, how about the fact that she was on welfare? She admitted that to Channel Four last year. Yeah, well, she was on. She, she's an illegal alien, and she's on welfare. Yeah, well, she was uh, came off a little bit arrogant during that whole uh, interview with Channel Four. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. So, okay, so what should people do if they want to help out on any of these bills? They should just they should call their uh, they should call their uh, local uh, legislator, right? Yeah, you know, like I said, we have passed it in the Senate, so, you know, put some heat on your local reps and ask them. I mean, I'm not sure on some of these issues if they've gotten a roll call over there, but I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, the great crop of uh, eager freshmen we have over there and and, and some of the leadership over there on the Republican side will get a roll call. How about the the Perry Amendment? Didn't you say that you filed by Jeff Perry, who uh, lost his seat when he ran for Congress last year down on the Cape? I mean, what about him? I mean, was he... uh, I mean, if you fi- is someone refiling that amendment? Well, the Perry, <laughs> the Perry amendment was basically he took the Headland Tower amendment. <laughs> and, uh, and okay, has someone filed refiled the Headland Tower amendment? Yeah, we, we ours was actually much more comprehensive than the Perry amendment. We, we we debated again this past May during budget debate. We got much of it passed in the Senate and was knocked out in conference again. Hmm. The Perry amendment was a, basically a piece of the Headland Tar yeah. amendment of the last few years, which passed the Senate, ironically. Can you take a call or two, Bob, then we'll let you go? Yeah, yeah i got a few minutes. Uh, Bill, you're next with Howie Carr and Bob Headland, Senator Bob Headland from Weymouth. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Howie. It's Bob. How you doing? Good. This, Howie, this whole thing, Bob's right. Anything a liberal says, like, on, on any issue, is always anecdotal. When the, when the other, the oxygen go on the other side, they say there's a pattern. When they're talking to the favor <laughs> this position, there's a pattern going on. But if it's, out, uh, it's just a conservative position, yeah. it's anecdotal. You know, it's the, same, it's the same thing with these people every time. I'd like to know, Howie, how did he get the social security number? Is he voting and framing him in elections? I don't know. I don't know the answer to either of those questions. And the the registry had they seemed uh, they seemed flummoxed when I asked him the question. How did he get this number? The the state trooper who who uh, emails us occasionally said that twenty years ago you could uh, they would take anybody any social security number as long as it wasn't in the RMV reg- base. So I mean, so in other words, you had forty nine states worth of uh, social security numbers to pick one. So if you just didn't pick one that was 010 or something like that, the the Massachusetts uh, low digit uh, uh, social security numbers, you'd be fine, right, Bob? I would think so. Yeah, thank you. Now, thanks, I, I, thanks, Bill. I had a recollection too on the X registration thing. I mentioned Mike Bodet on uh, Fox twenty five doing some great yeah. work. Yeah, he did a ride around with Officer Scott one day. They they randomly pulled over a car that had an X registration. Something was fishy. They made the guy open the trunk up, and he had three different uh, license plates in the trunk. 
how's that for Homeland Security? <laughs> And, and you know, and again, that for an, for an American, it's a serious crime to affix a false license plate to a vehicle, right? Right, and that was a random stop that Mike Bonet, you know, that day he happened to be out with, with Officer Scott on. But yeah. that's purely anic- that's anecdotal, right? <laughs> Right, but again, you know, you get in trouble if you're an American for doing that. And then, but they let they let it ride because, oh well, he's an illegal alien, and what else is he supposed to do? So we'll just let him let it ride. Well, I want to ride. I want to put. How about me? I want to put some fake plates on my car too. Uh, Kevin, you're next with Howie Carr and Bob Headland. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey Howie. Hi. Senator Headland. Yes, sir. You, you you're sitting there and you're 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 defending. Get rid of, you need to be up on the soapbox. There's no reason for these X registrations. Why have them? I'm trying to get rid of them. What can he do? He's outnumbered, Kevin. He's outnumbered. Even when they they doubled. What did he he say? I'm on a soapbox? Yeah, you're on a soapbox, yes. (laughs) I guess I am. Howie Castro is a pretty good soapbox to have. But, Kevin, he can't can't prevail. He's outnumbered. There's four. Throw some th- names out there. Throw some names out there of of your compadres. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean that, but I, throw some names out there of people that are blocking that, so people know what's going on. Uh, it's, uh, it's the House leadership. Yeah, it's past the Senate, so you don't have to worry about the Senate. You have to worry about the House leadership, starting with uh, Robert DeLeo and working your way south. Exactly. Thanks for the call, Kevin. Marilyn, you're next with Howie Carr and uh, Senator Bob Hedlund. Go ahead, Marilyn. Hi. Hi. I, I have an X plate that I've had for probably 25 years. It was right. given t- to the family during the Furcolo. No, 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 no. You're talking about that's a license plate you're talking yeah. about, right? I thought that's what you Oh, no, talking. no. We're talking about registrations. We're talking well, about registrations. It's the same thing. What, what do you mean? Are you talking about an X registration or a vanity plate? It's a vanity plate, but I'm getting, and now I'm saying, my gosh, I don't even want to ride around with that thing anymore. In case no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Don't. No, it's. Uh, you, uh, go ahead, Bob. You explain no, it to her. I'm just going to say. I mean, theoretically, you might have a vanity plate that is an X registration, but you can also have a vanity plate that's a regular plate. I mean, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, don't don't worry about it, Marilyn. Russ, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, and and uh, Senator Bob Hedlund. Go ahead, Russ. Hey, Howie, how many more illegal Obamas do we have in the Commonwealth? <laughs> I don't know. Vegas hasn't put up the odds yet on the over-under. Do me a favor. Will you, when you're in the Herald this week, drop by the Pine Street Inn and see how many have been registered. I, as, a, as an odds maker, I'm going to go for four as the over-under, Russ. You want the over or the under? No, I'll go with the over. I go for six. <laughs> hey, hey, Howie. Yes. The previous caller, when she mentioned she got it, thir- her family got it thrown in the Furcolo administration. That would have to be a vanity plate, not an X registration, yeah. because they didn't. X registrations didn't exist during the Furcolo administration. Yeah. I didn't know there were. I didn't know Furcolo did an X uh, X thing. I, I thought he had a. They they used to governors each used to take a different uh, a different letter of the alphabet and then give out their oh, own. No. Like, but the fact that these. Uh, uh, X registrations doesn't mean there's an X. Right. No, I, I understand. No. I understand just, that. It's just terminology that, for whatever reason, that the registry came up with. Okay, we'll take one more call, then we'll let you go. Uh, Ryan, you're next with Howie Carr and uh, Senator Bob Hedlund. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, listen, Howie, what I want to know, and you've got the uh, whereabouts to do it, is this guy a registered voter in Framingham? That's a... Uh, I somebody's going to find we'll be finding that out in the next day or so. OK, Ryan, we'll, that, a lot of people have been asking that today. And uh, we're uh, you know, they, I mentioned it and I just mentioned it briefly in my column on Sunday. And uh, we're, we're a little late to the game as it we're we're ahead of the globe by a day and a half. Anyway, we'll find out for you in the next day or so, Ryan. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Ryan. Yeah, Bob. And, then, and, then, and then when you find that out, how we will do another segment about uh, voter I.D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know the congressmen are trying to make it sound like a national voter ID would be a poll tax. It's it's absurd. They again, they just lie. They just flat out lie. It's not a I poll know. tax. It's just asking. You have to to get a beer at Fenway Park. You have to present a driver's license. I mean, isn't voting a little more important than having a beer at Fenway Park? I would say so. 
God, it's ridiculous. Good. Well, keep up the good work uh, and uh, keep going. And if, you, if you're interested in this, uh, talk to your rep and ask him what the problem, your state rep, ask your state rep what the problem is. Thanks. And thanks. Next, and no, no pun intended, but the, the next uh, legislative vehicle that comes up where we're going to have this debate again, we'll, we'll give you the heads up. Okay, please do. Please do. That's Senator Bob Headland from Weymouth. 1-877-469-4322. I'm Howie Carr. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.